Now I'll read from the Bible. Today's passage was from Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Also from chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 3, 17 through 19. To Adam, he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the fields. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, allowing us to gather today, even though it's a very unstable situation the world is in now. We know, Lord, that you are the Creator God who has created the world. We know, Lord, that you are always with us. And we know that Jesus Christ, through the cross, has uh, paid uh, the, pay the price for our sins. He is always protecting us and always providing encouragement and guidance for us and a grace as well. We're, we believe this and are very thankful for it. We thank you for today for Joy Anjiki, who will be giving a, pa a message today and have great expectations uh, for it. We, may the Holy Spirit work in all of us as we listen today. Allow us to have the spiritual ears to hear from you. We have great expectations. Pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. We'll be going over the passages that were just read and hearing a word from God. There was something that once happened in a family. The mother woke up her son and said, you know, let's go. It's time to go to school. And the son said, I don't want to go to school today. If I go to school, then everyone's going to, you know, pick on me. So I'm not going today. And... You know, mom kept saying that you have to go to school. You have to go. And, and the boy said, well, I know we have to go, but, like, really, why do you have to go? And the mom said to him, well, it's because you're the <laughs> principal of the school. <laughs> so it's the, the conversation between the uh, mom and the son. So there may be times like that. So... There may be, uh, you know, of course, here at the youth today, there's p different people who have different jobs. Some are related to um, you know, the uh, medical field or the education. There's some people who just, you know, work at home. There's people who are raising children. There's all different people with all different kinds of occupations here today. There's people who are probably also doing volunteer work as well. And there's people also who are doing all kinds of work at the church. So there's a lot of different types of work out there in the world. As for us in our lives, we have to think about work because it's very important. 
Why is it? Well, when we go out into the society, about a third of our time is spent doing work. When, if you take out the time we're asleep, then actually it's about half the time we're awake, we're working. So, we spend so much time working, so it's really worth thinking about exactly what work is because that actually forms our identity. That's why, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time, in order to know who they are, you often ask, you know, what kind of work do you do? As for myself, when I meet somebody for the first time, I, I us- when I'm asked,、um, you know, what do you do? They, you say, I say I'm a pastor. And then. And <laughs> Some people think that I actually would you know, be telling a lot of jokes and they don't have this image of me being a pastor, so it's kind of funny. But、um, you know, maybe that'll change over time. When you're thinking about your occupation, though, you can think about、uh, you know, how when you finish your education, you usually go off into the world and you just kind of go off into this world that's just as expected and you don't really even think about why you're working. but... Actually, you know, maybe it is worth、uh, taking some time to think about. Due to the coronavirus, there's been a lot of changes in people's work schedules. There's some people who want to work and they can't work, I believe. Also, there's some people who are actually working and, and doing so in a very risking their lives in a dangerous situation. There are some people who are you know, working to help you know, patients in hospitals and help with the medical field as well, risking their lives to do so. There's also people who are working really hard to raise their families at home as they're not able to go out. So the work environment has really changed a lot recently. And a lot of people have to, the opportunity to think about exactly why it is that they're you know, working. And so, this is an opportunity. So, now we'll be looking over the、um, passage that we read, just read. The first point today is about how we were made to work. Humans were made to work. In ancient Greek,、uh, work was actually considered to be evil, and it was thought to be actually a curse. So, that's why. When pe- they, people in those times needed work done, they would use a slave. In the present day as well, <laughs> most people just like, do whatever they can so they don't even have to work. And even though it is a necessity, they try to avoid it. So, what does the Bible say about work? In the start of Genesis, it talks about how God created heaven and earth, and it talks about the creation. Looking at ver-、uh, Genesis 2 2, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Here he's talking about a work, and it's the word、uh, that's actually called m a l k a in its original language. This is something that actually means labor that requires skill, and it's used and when it's pointing out work that's done by an artisan. In other words, it's kind of surprising that、uh, the Bible is stating that God's created world here is something that is a work in itself, and there's work to be done in it. It says that, that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, He rested. He looked at the world, and what did He think of what He had made? He's like, oh, that was a big pain. He's like, oh, I think I made a few mistakes.、I'm、like, oh, I don't want to do this ever again. No, 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 no. That's not what he said. What God said in Genesis 1 31 was that everything was very good. In other words, God enjoyed working and he was very satisfied with what he had done. On the sixth day, A day,、um, then he uh, uh, gave man work to do. He said, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds into the air and over every living thing and creature, creature that moves on the ground. So, this rule over them is not meaning they could just do whatever they want, but it means to like manage or you know, be in charge of something. So, God was saying to man that it's their responsibility to manage what he has created. 
So God asked man to continue to manage what he had created, and he wanted man to be able to, under, to enjoy doing what he had started. So the Bible talks about how man,、uh, God created man in his image. And so we are created to in reflect him. Our spiritual、uh, and moral existence is that which is to, to be like God as we enjoy what doing the work provided for us. So, work is something that is actually necessary for us in our lives because we were made to work. Due to the coronavirus impact at present, a lot of people have unfortunately lost their jobs. To lose one's job is something that you know, gives a person a lot of、uh, you know, difficulty in, as, psychologically. Because it's taking away the design that God has for them to work. If you're looking in the creation story and look at the Garden of Eden, you can see how God assigned them to do work even then. It said that work was not something that was done as、uh, you know, a, a, diff, a penalty, but actually something they were supposed to be a joy. The second point today is that work was impacted by the fall. It says that the Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit of, good and,、uh, fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and because of that, work、uh, was impacted. Looking at、uh, verses 3 17, it says, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Verse 18 It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. So, due to the impact of sin, work became something that actually involves pain. It's likely that you have some talent in your life, and there's some work or occupation you have that you're doing. And it's likely that you have difficulties doing this due to、um, health reasons or you know, human relationships, or you may feel other、uh, difficulties in doing your job. And it's possible that even Though you work really hard, that it's possible your hard work is not appreciated or reflected in your、uh, payment at the job. There was one person who failed at his job and、uh, started to do、um, if, comic drawings, but then he was you know, told, dismissed from his job、uh, as a, a comic writer because it was said that he was not creative enough. <laughs> This man was actually Walt Disney. So, even though you know, it's said that he has an amazing imagination, when he was young, it was told to him that he was just not even creative enough to be、uh, a comic writer. For us as well, when we're working, it may be that we have to face various problems. Also, due to the impact of sin, the work itself that we're doing could possi- can possibly turn into an idol itself. What this means is that all people are re- impacted by the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden because we have a broken relationship with God when we are born. And we all have this like, emptiness inside of us that we want desperately to be filled. One person w- referred to this as like having an empty cavity in their heart. Most people try to fill this emptiness in their heart with something other than God. And for a lot of people, this ends up being work. However, this idol of work, even though you can be very successful at it, is not something that can actually provide true fulfillment to our hearts. And the, there was、um, a famous tennis player the, by the name of David Foster Wallace. 
uh, sorry, Boris Becker, I'm sorry, in the 1980s. And he won the Wimbledon twice, and then he, and he got the highest placement at once. He had a lot of money and got everything he basically wanted. However, he was no, he felt no different than um, pop singers or you know comedians or famous people who would try to commit suicide. He just uh, realized he wasn't happy even though he had it all. Many people who are successful at work can even real are especially ones who realize that this emptiness in their heart can't be filled with such an idol. For Du Bois Becker, he realized that he couldn't find this fulfillment he was expecting in his success with tennis. I'd like to explain about another person as well. He's an American author by the name of David Foster Wallace. And in his field, he was actually the top, and he was a bestseller writer, you know, writing numerous books. A few years before he died, he spoke at Kenyon College at a graduation ceremony, and this is actually a very famous speech, speech that um, is well known. His speech has actually been um, put into this book called This is Water. I would like to read a, just a portion of what his speech was. He was going to speak to these uh, graduates who were about ready to go into the society and said the following, Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never have enough, never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your body and beauty and sexual lure, and you will always feel ugly. Worship power, you will end up feeling weak and afraid, and you will never, ever have, have, have enough power over others to numb you over your own fear. Worship your intellect being seen as smart, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud always on the verge of being found out. So Wallace is actually an atheist, was actually an atheist, but he ha realized that everybody truly was looking for something to worship and that that worship, whatever they were looking, th thing they were trying to find to worship wouldn't be able to satisfy them. He says, if you worship something, even when, when you're in despair, what you've worshipped will eat you alive. And this is a really you know, strong statement. So, for example, no matter how successful you may be at your job, it will not provide you with the true fulfillment that you desire. Due to the impact of sin, work ha itself has changed. However, thanks to it, we are able to... Uh, sorry, we are able to the Bible to know what can give us true fulfillment. We know that because Jesus Christ provides the true water, living water that we want. Jesus Christ says in John 4.14, 4, But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So Jesus Christ himself is able to completely and fulfill this emptiness that we have in our hearts. In this situation, we need to think about us as Christians and how we should have a stance about life. La, you know, our work, i sorry, our work, and our work shouldn't be just something that we just go through the motion a day after day. We need to realize that God has given us a specific job for a specific purpose. Let's look at the third point. Work is to express God's glory. Looking in the New Testament, it talks about Paul and how he uh, spoke to the Christians. 1 Corinthians seven seventeen. Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. This is the rule I lay down in all the churches. So he was speaking to people who just become Christians, and he was telling them how they can please God and that they didn't have to change their occupation to do so. They were just to you know, continue on with what they had been assigned. So Paul was saying that regardless of the type of work we have, 
that we can be used in the place where God has placed us. Right now, a lot of you are working, of course, and it's not just by chance that you are where you are. It's all in God's plan. Also, we are to do our best effort at our work where we are placed, and in this way we can express、uh, God's glory. That is our assignment from God. There's various thistles and thorns that we'll definitely have to face in our jobs, and there may be some types of jobs and things that we're assigned to do that we didn't anticipate. However, even in those situations, we want to hold on to God's calling for us and to follow Him、uh, you know, as, as we should. Even in those circumstances, God's glory can truly be、uh, expressed. Michelangelo was、uh, one of the you know, most famous、uh, artisans in his time. And he was able to you know, realize this、uh, gift he had at an early age. He, it was just like he was born to do so. One of his greatest work is called his work of David. And he was some, this is something he actually did when he was in his 20s. When he was in his early 30s, he was asked by the Pope to do this carving, and, and so that's why he went to Rome on his way, though that request was changed, and he was, tr- was asked to do a different type of work than he'd ever done before, and it was to do this painting on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Michelangelo was trying to decide what to do because that wasn't his profession and, his, and you know, he was a good at carving. However, the Pope、um, you know, had asked him to do this, and so he couldn't really say no, so he agreed to do it. This, this work he was assigned to do was something that actually rivals had、uh, asked him to do. They had thought that Michelangelo would refuse the request and then he, or he would fail at it, and so they were just hoping he'd fail either way. However, Michelangelo、uh, decided to go through with it and he did it, it, did it with his full effort. The, of course, he was to draw you know, 12 disciples on the ceiling. But he did something great, much greater than that. He ended up drawing about 400 people on the ceiling and、uh, drew nine, uh, various scenes from Genesis 9. This took him a period of four years you know, on his back, painting all this on the ceiling, and it was a very difficult thing for him to do. His eyesight、um, you know, fell apart, and his body did as well. People who knew him at that time. When they saw him after he had finished, weren't even able to recognize him physically when he was done. That's just how ta-、uh, trying this was for him. However, he fulfilled the request of the Pope. He was a very talented、uh, person and did an amazing work. There was one person who looked at this and said, You know, you don't have to be so particular in like, these you know, little places. You know, nobody's going to even notice. But Michelangelo resp- responded to this person by saying, Yeah, it's true that nobody might see that, aspect, these tiny aspects, however, but God is watching. So to him, work was something that expressed you know, worship to God. So, regardless of what kind of work he was doing, it, he wanted to be able to express you know, God's glory by doing a good job at it. He was very、uh, you know, committed to doing his best, regardless of whether it was in the, his first,、um, first choice position or place. As for you and where you are working now, That's where God has placed you at this time. In the place where you're working now, I encourage you to work there with joy and do so knowing that you are working for God and you are doing so also to express His glory. 
through your working um, efforts, it's likely that others who are working beside you will be able to see Christ in you. And that's an amazing uh, testimony you can have. If we really think about work in a much larger uh, aspect in perspective, um, it, you can see different things. So it's something about how we can develop the world through working for God. God has created us to you know, work for God, sorry, work and to manage what he has created. And we are not just here to maintain it. We are to use it to put our hand into it and to help further development. This was something that uh, God had told Adam originally in the Garden of Eden. Now I'll read uh, from Genesis once again, verse 19. By the sweat of your brow you will eat food and, until you return to the ground. Since uh, from, from it you were taken, and for dust and dust you will return. Oh, sorry, that was 2.19. Refer to the screen, please. So, anyway, so Adam was uh, assigned to give animals names. And up until then, God had created everything. However, here, God gave Adam the job to do that. In other words, God used what he had created invited man into it and asked man to make to make his own effort to do something with it the present uh, us who are living in this era today can use the jobs we have been assigned to us to put our hand into it in order to uh, further god's work here in agriculture uh, seeds are used to produce various types of uh, products. And through these, these products, then we are able to, you know, grow and, and live. Through music, many people combine music notes and rhythms to be able to create something that has never existed before to, uh, you know, really impress people. Through children and people who work with other people, they are able to use their talents to be able to bring about uh, the talents and skills of others. There's people who make clothes and people who make medicine and make other items. And in these ways, we are using what God has provided and our skills in order to develop it and make it into something even better. And this is something that can be said about all forms of work. So in one way, looking at this, you can see how work is something that God is allowing us to be able to look back at how he originally designed work to be. Before the fall in Eden, we can see just how God had originally signed work to be. When Jesus Christ comes back in the second coming, at that time, the world will truly be restored in full. Today, we've been looking at the theme of what it means to work. And most people live, you know, 80 or 90 years, and uh, there's a limit to what we can actually do while we're here. So with our limited time, we can try to do our best to be able to pass on the world to the next generation. In Spain, there is a, a, a chapel called Sag Sagrada Familia, and it's still not even finished, even though it was uh, began in 1882. Uh, he, man by God, he began it, and he died in 1926. The ninth person is now in charge of this building and continuing the architectural work on it. And he anticipates that it will be in the around year 2026, which is 100 years after Gaudi died. So it's almost about to be done. In Gaudi's mind, he had you know a finished product, 
but it was not himself that would be able to finish it, but others. In the same way, we only have a limited time in our lives for what we can do and where we can go. However, the work we do can provide the basis for that of the people in the next generation to further develop and to complete. If you think about it in that way, you may feel a little bit sad in a sense. The reason why is that even though we can be so enthusiastic about doing something and working really hard in our lives, our lives, you know, our, our names won't necessarily be left behind in history because of it. You know, it's really God's glory, though, that we need to be, you know, thinking about in this case. In Matthew, uh, there's the story, of the parable of the talents, and the servant was supposed to be, you know, in charge of a specific um, amount of money, and it's a story of how God has given us all various gifts and capabilities, and He's going to evaluate us of what we did with it. In the story, it's talk, it talks about just what a great return each servant had on what was given to him. Two of the servants uh, had you know, a different amount they were able to get back, but they received the same praise words from the, the master. And the, it wasn't really the amount of what was achieved that was um, evaluated, but rather the effort that was put into it. And the master said to uh, these two men, and this is something I think we should also remember ourselves, once again, it's not, you know, what we do here on earth will likely be forgotten by others. But we should work for a crown that will not perish and that remember that we are in the end evaluated by God and not man. If we do the best we can with what we do here, then when we see Jesus Christ, then it's just, then it will be the same way. Then where the master and God says, well done, good and faithful servant, enter the joy, enter the joy of your Lord. At that time, we can receive this crown that will not perish, the crown, crown of glory. And there's nothing that will be more wonderful than this. This is something that we can be working toward with the job and the work we have been assigned here on earth at our various places where God has placed us as we express God's glory through it. Allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of worship this morning. Due to the coronavirus, there's a lot of people who are, whose work uh, environment has changed because of it. We ask, Lord, that the virus come to an end as soon as possible and that things will get back to normal as soon as possible as well. We also ask, Lord, that in the various workplaces where we are each day, that we remember you and realize that it's not just by chance that we're there, but rather that you've placed us there for a purpose. God, we ask that you we can use the talents and capabilities that you have given us with joy and do a good job at our work to be able to express your glory. Lord, we know that all this world will pass away, but we know that your woe word will not, and that we run toward to achieve the crown that will not perish. Lord, when we um, get to heaven, we hope to be told by you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Thank you so much for this time of worship today, Lord. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence.
Now I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. That concludes today's worship service. Now we have a few announcements. First, we have...